Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. Yes, it's been a while because I've been concentrating on other things. We've got the tour season now starting, so, you know, these things happen. But I wanted to do this video because, to be perfectly honest with you, a lot of players out there are doing themselves an injustice. Look, I get asked quite a lot of times actually about bad teams, bad RNG, rigged MM, the list is endless. And my standard response is actually stop finding excuses. Now look, that may seem really blunt and rather harsh. It is, but it's meant to be. The thing is, there is a lot of truth behind that statement. In this video, we're primarily, or I am primarily, aiming for those newer players and those players who are struggling to increase their win rate. And they seem to be losing more battles than they win because there are some really basic tips and hints that will actually help you in the long run. First things first, stop tear rushing. Oh, look, it's a cliche. Look, I know we all want to get to those really high tiers with those big guns and play those tanks that almost every YouTuber seems to put videos out on. The thing about Blitz is that it's what's called a progressive game. In other words, you're meant to slowly progress through the game. That's why there are 10 tiers. Those tiers are designed to help you progress at a steady rate to allow you to improve your skills your technical ability and overall gameplay but over time and that is the thing this thing takes time and believe me rushing the tears you're not doing yourselves any favors because you're just not ready to jump into those bigger tanks even though you may think you are and what are you gonna do you are only hurting yourself Okay, a lot of other players will turn around and say you're hurting them too. But the fact of the matter is, you're not interested in other players, you're interested in yourself. And with tear rushing, you are hurting yourself. So therefore, the way I like to approach the tier structure is as follows. Now look, there are no hard or fast rules to this. It's just the way I generally look at the way the tier system is designed and what it's meant to give you and what you are meant to take from it. I'm not saying that what I'm saying is right, may not be, but it's the way I approach it. And I'm only gonna be playing certain battles in tier seven on the replays. And there's a reason behind that. And before we get into this, I'm not some super duper unicorn with some amazing win rate, okay? It's just not like that. I am an average player who just absolutely enjoys playing this tank and the, uh, this tank, this game and the challenges that it represents in order to get better. And therefore I break up the tier structure into effectively four elements. We have tiers one to four. Now these are the introductory tiers. These are designed to introduce you to the world that is World of Tanks Blitz and to try and explain to you what you're going to expect and to break you in gently. As a newer player, you will find yourself playing against bots for the initial battles. But as you progress, you will be introduced to more and more humans and real people just like yourself who are trying to get better at the game. These tiers are really a continuation of that initial training tutorial. And Wargaming doesn't want to throw too much at you at that stage. You're not expected to be amazing as such. You are expected to learn how to move, how to shoot, how to focus a tank, where to hit a tank, and basic stuff like that. And as you progress all the way up from tier one to tier four, you're meant to be opening new lines and getting used to what certain tanks will do and what, how they will play. You're meant to be understanding this. And nine times out of 10, the majority of you are starting this, you will find out that if you YOLO and rush, forget about anything else, nine times out of 10, because the bots are a little bit useless, you are gonna win more battles than you lose. And that gives you a kind of false sense of security. But the thing is, as I said, it's meant to be 
introductory tiers. They're only designed to introduce you to World of Tanks Blitz. We then have tiers five to seven. And once you get to these tiers, Wargaming will throw more at you, such as Camouflage, HE Shell, and tougher opponents. These are the tiers that are designed to build upon your initial training in tiers one to four. They're there to start you to learn more advanced skills, such as going all down, side scraping, and where to put your tank on a map. These tiers introduce you to the likes of the KV-1, a side scraping demon, the KV-2, a derp gun monster, and of course things like the Tiger-1, which is a beast of a heavy with good all-round abilities. In these tiers, you are expected to understand the role that your tank should be playing on the battlefield. You should be moving away from just driving in headlong, you know, throw caution to the wind, blasting away at everything, and now you should be looking at a more refined way of playing, therefore more refined tactics. You're meant to use the map and the terrain. You're meant to get a better understanding of not only the tank, but its class and what it can do. These tiers are basically the mid-tiers, as I like to call them, purely designed to move you from training tiers and prepare you as much as possible for those higher tiers. And this is one of the best tiers, I think. Now, yeah, 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 I get that a few people don't like tier 7. I think it's a really nice tier. And the reason I don't like it is because you have the likes of the Annihilator and the Smasher. And as a tier 7, you will come across tier 8. But that's the thing. Inside tier 7, there are some absolute gems of some tanks, such as the Tiger P, which I'm playing now, or the Tiger 1. Okay, so that's tier 7. Basically, moving you from those introductory tiers, preparing you for those higher tiers. I personally now move on to tier 8, and I ring fence tier 8 in its own little category, because I generally consider this as a, what I call an interim tier. This is the tier where you find more premium tanks than tech tree tanks. This tier is numerically not a mid-tier, I mean, that would obviously be tier 5, but in real terms, this is a tier designed to allow players to experience the higher level of the game, whilst potentially putting them into tier 7 battles, give them some advanced learning, and stuff like that. Tier 8 is designed to basically allow you to refine your skills, with the ability to earn credits and XP, what with the numerous amounts of premium tax that it has thrown at it. I am not a massive fan of tier 8 because of the amount of premiums that are in that reside in that tier. But when I break it all down, I look at it as like I said, tiers 1 to 4 is the introductions, tiers 5 to 7 is where you get more advanced, and tier 8 is where you get to sort of get even more advanced whilst winning some premium credits and you know XP and stuff like that. So if you've got the money, you've got the cash you're able to get one of these premium tanks then that's basically what I think tier 8 is all about. We then move on to the last two tiers which are tier 9 and tier 10. Now in my view these are the only top tiers. They're designed for players who are now very familiar with the tanks, they understand the role that the tank is meant to play, they understand the maps and they have mastered some more of the advanced skills out there, all down, side scraping, etc, etc. Once you get to these tiers, you should also be understanding quite, quite easily now, things like equipment, camouflage, consumables, what the different ammunition types do, and more of the intricate elements of the game. That is what I'm thinking. Now you may differ to me, but that's how I see the tier system working. With that in mind, what do I mean by tier rushing? Well, this is where players jump into tiers that they're really not prepared for, for a variety of reasons. Look, it's human nature and I understand players want to get their paws on firstly tanks they know, they then want those big derpy guns, and they want to roll out in the top pinnacle tier of the game. I get that, I understand that. But this is what I'm saying, guys. You're doing yourselves an injustice. You are effectively putting yourself in a position where you, the player, 
if you're not ready for these top tiers, is you're effectively making yourself lose. Simple as that. Now the thing is, there's no such rule or anything preventing players from doing this, and rightly so. I mean, this is a game, and however people want to approach the game is totally up to them. However, if you are one of those players that really wants to do well in this game, they really want to improve, and you really want to be a good player overall, then you need to have a more methodical approach to the game as a whole, I think. I would advise that any player who really seeks to improve to avoid tier rushing and to concentrate on those mid tiers, such as tier 6 and tier 7. By all means, drop into tier 8, especially as I said, if you're lucky enough to grab a premium tank, earn those credits and that XP. But seriously, do yourself a favour and learn the basics in those mid tiers, i.e., tier 6 and tier 7. Because it really is invaluable training and invaluable learning for you. And it will aid you greatly once you are actually ready to progress into those dizzying heights of tier 9 and tier 10. The other thing that you need to remember about the very top tiers is that you will come across some of the very best players in the game. Those guys who have purple win rates. Those guys who are pro players. And are the most experienced. Yeah, you may get to turn them over every now and then, but in most of the cases, they will run absolute rings around you. And they will not only spoil your fun, but they will completely ruin your win rate. You will be farm, you will be focused, and before you realize it, your win rate will sink faster than the Bismarck. It's that straightforward, guys. Never forget that. In the top tiers, that is where the best of the best of the best players generally hang out. And you will come across them, and they will smack you every single day of the week, twice on Sunday. So you really need to take that into account and be mindful of that. So this is the last replay, and the thing is, I wanted to play this one because this is me tuning with Alexander from Wargaming. And we had a great time the other night. Okay, we didn't win that many battles, but we had a great time. And, um, you know, the thing is, if you ever see Alexander on the battlefield, be mindful. She's a good player. I think she has a win rate of somewhere in the region of uh, 58%. So be careful with her, because she can blast you and outplay you. So she's, she's, she's quite good at what she can do on the battlefield. Believe that. Anyway, getting back to the topic at hand. Guys, do yourself a big favor, really seriously. Resist that temptation rolling out in those top tiers until you have refined your knowledge and your skills, primarily in those mid tiers. Look, I understand people can't help themselves and they really want those big guns and those big tanks in those top tiers. And if you're one of those, then do yourself another favor if you can't resist rolling out in those tanks. Do it in the fun game modes. Yeah, I'm talking mad games, uprising, burning games, realistic, and of course you could forget boss mode. Because those game modes allow you to become familiar with the tank, and as such, allow you to get better acquainted with what to expect. Okay, you've got some strange sort of abilities and stuff, and you're still going to get shouted at by people because this is a competitive game. But the thing is, you won't ruin your stats. You won't ruin your win rate. And you will be able to practice to your heart's content and possibly earn a load of XP and credits along the way. What's not to like about those type of game modes? I mean, I think they're fantastic. I think they, you know, they, they do exactly that. They relieve the tension, they remove the stress, and allow you to chill out a little bit. Main thing is, take your time. Because it's not just about shooting that tank, or blowing that tank up, or putting your tank in that position. There are other refineries to this game, and you need to understand what the equipment does. Because the equipment is an important part, okay? And you need to find that equipment that best suits not just the tank, but also you as a player and your gameplay. You then need to get to grips with the consumables, again, because you need to find what is going to work best for you and what is going to work best for the tank. You need to start understanding the benefits of camouflage and, above all, 
You need to understand what certain ammunition types do. There's no point you blasting HE and Hesh all over the shop if all you're going to do is splash damage, okay? Because it's just a waste. So get familiar with the ammo, what it can do. And trust me, to effectively use HE and Hesh, you need to understand the tanks that you're up against, okay? You also need to understand what gun is best for what tank. Because the derp gun is not always necessarily the best gun. Believe that. I mean, in the charity, I very rarely roll out in the top bit derpy gun. I use the gun below it because I find it more effective, funnily enough. So, it, but, so but this comes with it time and experience and understanding. Above all, if you are one of those players that really, really takes your blitzing seriously, then take it slowly. Because blitz, as I say, is more than just rolling out and blasting things. It's a thinking game, a strategic game. It's not always the brawn, but the brains that will get you wins in battles. Almost all the top players learn and apply the ability to outthink their opponents, which then allows them to outplay their opponents. It's very rarely the other way around. They are able to do so, of course, with a combination of skill, experience, and above all, knowledge. But the thing is, they do that by practice, 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 practice over a period of time. You know, they don't just join the game, get a, a tier 10 after one battle, and then become a super duper unicorn. It doesn't work that way, guys, trust me. So, if you really want to be a better player, then like I said, do yourself a favor. Take things slowly. Stop putting yourself in a position where you are going to lose games. And the biggest, biggest thing that I see that makes players lose games is rushing those tiers. The only way you will ever achieve your aims, unless you're lucky enough to be super, super skilled, like from birth, which only happens to the few, not the many, although we all like to think we're super duper unicorns and super stilled, but the only way you're ever gonna achieve your overall aims if you wanna get better is by approaching the game methodically, progressively, and slowly. Anyway, I've been fooded. That has just been my take on how to stop yourself losing, how to become a better blitzer. By all means, comment and everything below, because that's the reason for YouTube comments. I'm not telling you that what I'm saying is right. I'm not telling you that my opinion is 100% accurate. Your views may differ, your views may contrast with mine and i'd love to hear from you but and as always guys look until the next time stay safe out there have fun on that battlefield and happy tanking because it is just a game and it is designed for you to have fun and be happy